<laughs> Generally speaking, when you're in the studio and you're putting together a solo, what's your approach? Do you come in with it kind of written out and prepared or do you just noodle till you find the magic? Yeah, that's a great question because I, I think I work quite differently from a lot of people. Um, I will work on some solos, but I would say by far, I like to leave it until the day. And typically, I don't do more than about five takes. I find that uh, those first five takes uh, are the most um, pure takes for me, where I'm just not thinking about what I'm playing and I'm just playing. I'm caught up with what I'm hearing and how I apply the solo to what the bass, when I say bass, I mean B-A-S-E, of the song is, the, the structure of the song, the tonality, the emotion, all of that stuff. I'll listen to it numerous times before I actually play a single note when we're doing solos. And then I'll do those five takes, and, uh, and I find after that I start repeating myself. And, and, and I know part of it is trying to find a structure and develop a structure, but at the same time, I'm never, I, I, get, I just get bored with it. I, you know, I'm impulsive when it comes to that sort of thing. Getty's the opposite. He really has to hear everything wrong before he knows it's right. So he'll spend hours and hours and hours uh, doing stuff. I like to spend minutes doing stuff. And this solo, for example, for Limelight, if my recollection is correct, it was about five or six takes that we did for that. Then Terry and Ged, they'd kick me out of the room and they would do a comp of those solos. And I wouldn't come back in the room until they were ready and they said, you know, to come back in. And generally I would say that I was happy with how they perceived the solo and how they fitted the parts. You know, Getty and I are super, super, super close. We're I mean, we've worked together for so long and we've been best friends for f forever, for, f I don't know, 50 years, more, more than 50 years, so 55 years. Did, and, that, uh, did that ever create uh, odd moments in solos where they comp something together that's like super unnatural as a guitar player and then you have to go out and do it live for the rest of your life? Always. <laughs> always. <laughs> it was always, but then it was a challenge to, cause I, I had to learn that solo. And I always, I think, well, I played it. I played those parts. So right. I'll be able to do it again. It's just how you put them together. Like from here to here in the space of a millisecond is a tough <laughs> reach, you know, but, uh, and, and this solo was one of those, this has, you know, it has a lot of really languid kind of movement and, bends and, and pulls and drops and notes that come in and creep up. And uh, and when I first heard the comp, I, I thought, well, they really got all the stuff that I liked. I, I mean, I can't really remember what was left over from those solos, but I was very happy with, with the structure and, um, and how they heard it and put it together because it really reflects the emotional character of the song, of being disconnected and uh, living a life that's on a stage and, and kind of fake and not real and uh, and the demands that, that kind of celebrity that, that takes from you. The solo, I really wanted to to echo that that feeling and that, that sense of loneliness. Well, it's and, really interesting you say that because it's, it's such a dramatic scene change within the song. You know, with the rhythm guitar completely drops out. It gets real lonely. Yeah, yeah, it's a real mood shifter, that one. Um, and it's, it, I think it, it fulfilled everything that I wanted out of it. And most, most of the solos that I've done, um, I feel pretty confident that I nailed what I, uh, uh, my expectations, not always. Some are just crazy playing and, uh, fills the void. And I, and those, th those solos really stand out to me. I can't name any right now, but what, like the analog kid where it's just fast uh, and crazy. Well, that analog kid was fast and crazy because I wanted it to be really energetic and, and crazy. Yeah. And, and it is, you know, that I had a, uh, what do you call it? A, like a, um, a harmonizer pedal that kicks in, you know, towards the end of the solo. And it just creates so much tension and angst and 
the teenage kind of uh, sensibility. Uh, so that that was satisfying to me. That that did do what I intended it to do.